Okay, today we're going to learn how to draw a bird. So, to draw a bird, you start out with an oval shape usually. Most birds are oval in shape. If you trace the line around the body of the bird, it is basically an oval. And then add the tail and details and legs, and you've got a bird. So, we're going to start out with this thrush here. If you get a bird picture that you like, tear it carefully out of the magazine so that you can keep it with your drawing until you are done with your bird. And someone else can use the magazine because there are at least two pictures of birds on each page of the Birds and Blooms magazine. Now, when we start, you want to start out with a pencil, a regular pencil with an eraser, or a drawing pencil. Okay, the drawing pencils are these turquoise pencils, and they give you the number on the side. This is 2B. That's a fairly soft pencil, and but we're going to start with that, or maybe a 3B. Okay, if you want to start with a different pencil, that is fine. Now, artists hold their pencils like this because it allows you to move your hand around without pressing too hard. When you hold your pencil like this, when you press with the tip down, it makes a really dark mark. But when you use the side of your pencil, it's much, much lighter, okay? So we're gonna start out with that oval shape that I was telling you about. This is a thrush. We have thrushes around here. We may not have this exact thrush, but it's more or less this shape, okay? So we start out with that oval. Hopefully everyone can see that. And then we start to make the details, okay? We've got the top of the bird is here, or where the head joins the body. You can kind of see that it's a different shape here. You want to draw light until you're pretty happy with your overall shapes, and then you can go back in and draw those details. So we want to get the shapes of the wings, the tail, the head, the beak, and the legs, and then once we get that, we can go back in for details, okay? Now, to do this, you might want to measure with your pencil how big things are on your paper. So, for example, his head here is cut almost in half between black and orange, right? So you want to draw those markings and try to make sure you're keeping track of how big or how small his head is. And again, if I draw light like this, at this point I can erase most of my lines. So if you draw a line and you're not happy with it, you can pretty much erase most of it. Okay, that beak is right at where the black and the orange meet. And you can use your pencil to measure things just like that. And that will show you how long you need to have that beak be, which is a little bit, and you can even like draw on your pencil. This is kind of a weird technique that I learned in college, but you can draw on your pencil so that you figure out exactly how long the beak needs to be. Okay, <clears throat> now I've got the basic body shape and the beak. I need to add the other wing and back, right? Kind of comes over here, and the tail. Now, the tail is partially hidden by the snow, and it's also partially hidden by this wing and this tree limb. So, if you have a hard time with drawing the legs like I do, then you might want to pick a picture just like this one where you don't really see much of the legs and you don't really see much of the tail. The tail and the legs are the hardest part of drawing birds, and so you want to make sure that you have that part 
either covered or it looks in, in a way that it's kind of comfortable. Like this one here is pretty good too with the legs because it just shows the one toes and they're kind of splayed, the three. And that's how we normally think of birds' legs. When they're gnarled and crumpled like this, they are hard to draw sometimes. It's the same thing with hands. I have a really hard time drawing hands still to this day. And I've been drawing for a very, 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 very long time. So drawing hands are something you can practice as well as drawing bird legs. But if you find that you're just frustrated with that part, don't feel bad at all because I get frustrated with it too. It just They just don't tend to look right because they're kind of skinny and bony. So, okay. Now I'm drawing this tree here. You don't have to add all of the details, but you might want to add some details. Like in the background, you can see this tree limb here, and you can even add that in, even though it's kind of blurry. It still helps to give that habitat of the bird. And when you're painting it or drawing it, you can make it kind of fuzzy in the background. But if it's there, it kind of adds to that habitat. Okay. Oops, I think I need to go on this side because it's touching the wings here. And now I'm going to start adding details. So you can start adding in and start drawing darker if you're happy with your shape. Okay. Now I might want to look at the shape here and make sure it's very similar to my shape here. And if I don't like it, this is the time to change it, right? Okay. Again, these drawing pencils make it easy to erase and go back over it and start adding in those details. So like, for example, the stripes and he, they're kind of hard to figure out where they go, but they're kind of, these feathers kind of start here, and then there are more feathers that are longer that go back here, and those are the, and then they attach to these shorter feathers here. And if you look closely, you can see that in the photograph. You have to kind of know bird anatomy a little bit. That helps too. Okay, so that is pretty much his or her, their wing, we'll call it a they. Okay, now I'm gonna add the eye and the little orange part above and then this back wing. And I think I'm pretty much ready to start to draw my, or to color in my bird. Okay, now I'm gonna use chalk pencils because I like the way that they look on a bird drawing. And all that you do with chalk pencils, we just did this with the Martin Luther King, is you can draw in the area. The nice thing about it is you can smudge it a little bit you can erase it if you don't like the color at all. You can pretty much erase it almost completely. So, and then find another color, maybe a brighter color if you want. And you can layer colors. Just Okay, so you can erase your pencil line. See how the pencil is kind of blending with the chalk a little bit? You can erase that at this point if you want to because you don't necessarily want your orange to be gray, right? So if you want to go back in, you can and make those little marks on the feathers and do all that fun stuff. Don't be afraid to be bold with color and 
detail because you can always go back and change it later. Okay, now I'm gonna find a dark gray, I think. And I might end up going to black later, but for right now, I think I'm just gonna stick with a dark gray. Maybe some brown, too. Okay, now you can also draw in between that orange and it'll really make it pop out. Another thing you can do if you mess up is you can go back and you can put white on top and then put the orange on. Okay, so what you can't see right now is that I'm constantly looking back at the picture while I'm drawing. And the nice thing about these chalk pencils is, again, that you can also use them for shading. You can blend them with your finger. And also, you can erase if you need to, okay? It's interesting to me that this bird has um, these feathers that almost look like koi fish. And I think that's what I liked about this bird from the beginning. Okay, I'm gonna go to brown. I think I'm gonna add a little brown because his feathers, his or her feathers, are starting to take kind of a brownish tinge over here. Also, when you mix colors, sometimes it separates one color from another. So you kind of want the head and the body to look separate from this other back wing a little bit. Um, and instead of using black, for outline, which you can certainly do. A lot of great artists use black for their outlines. But if you really want to um, show a difference in space and where things are, it's helpful to use a completely different color set. So for example, even if this color isn't in this bird, this is a dark blue-ish gray. I'm gonna add it in because it's going to give me, um, blue is the complement of orange, and so it's going to give me a little bit of um, kind of a vibrance, I guess, would be a good word for it. I don't know, it's um, using complementary Complementary colors do vibrate when you put them next to each other, and so even though it's a bluish gray, when you put it next to this orange, it pops out, basically, which I think helps make the drawing really beautiful. Again, I'm gonna do these koi pond. They remind me of koi fish, little feathers. and start to build up that layer of feather versus non-feather versus beak. and Figure out where you want things to go. Don't just work in one area and leave another area alone because oftentimes 
you do that, then you won't be happy with your drawing in the end. Your goal is to kind of have an overall drawing that you're happy with, and so you don't want to really leave one area alone. Um, that was something my professors taught me in college. First of all, is that each part of the drawing is very is as important as the other. So you don't want to you want to kind of move around the page, and that way you don't forget something too. Forgetting in drawing is really easy to forget one part versus another. Okay, I'm kind of getting there to the final, final of um, detail at this point. I think I want to stop the video because at this point we're talking about individual styles and you are going to create something that is your own and it probably, hopefully, won't look anything like mine. And so, I don't think, at this point, it's, it's not helpful for you to see my drawing because yours may look completely different. And that is 100% okay. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this today. I'm going to keep working on this. And hopefully by the end of class, I will have it finished to show you, which I am... Um, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, thanks for listening.